Alright guys, here we go. Part 3 of our little living room uh, section here. Um, when last we left, we had just finished uh, creating the, the chairs and the coffee table and creating the, the window in the wall, the hole in the wall and the frames for it. The, uh, the facing and the, the ledge for it. So, now we're going to go ahead and fill in the window with actual panes of glass and then we'll have some little pane dividers in there as well. So, when we added the 3D cursor in there to the middle of the window section, that was great because that's where we need it now. So we'll just uh, jump back to orthographic front view and I'm going to go ahead and shift A and we're going to add a plane again. And this time we're going to go ahead and tab into edit mode and we're going to hit the R button and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis and then hit enter. So what I did was I pressed the R button to rotate and then push 90 on the numpad and then the X button and then the enter button on the numpad. So it rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis. So now we're going to scale it to fit the window sideways or horizontally and now we'll scale it on the Z axis to fit it vertically. So we'll go to about right there. And then we'll tab out and you can't really see it now because it's the same color. We'll mess with materials and all that later on but uh, for now you can't see it because the it's the same gray as the the border, the frame of it, the uh, the facing and everything. So, but if we rotate around you can kinda see that it's actually a little bit deeper into the window recess and you can move it back even further if you like but not too far because you don't want to actually go outside the frame so we'll just leave it about right there and now just to make things a little simpler let's hit the Z button so we're actually looking at the wireframe view and we'll go back to our front view and the orthographic and let's go ahead and add a cube now so we're gonna shift A and we're gonna add a cube and we'll tab into edit mode and just hit the S button just scale everything way down I'm going to scale it way, way down, about to maybe right there. Now we're going to scale it up on the z-axis, so we have a, so we can go from the bottom all the way to the top, so S, Z, and then just move your mouse and scale it up. And if you can't go far enough, like right now, I'm almost outside the screen, so I'm just going to go ahead and click and lock that, that uh, height in there, and I'll go ahead and do it again, so S, Z, and now you can see it goes a lot faster because it's starting from a taller piece. So we'll put it to about right there, maybe drag it down just a bit. So you can see the, the bottom frame of the window right here, the bottom ledge and then the top frame and the, the sides right there. So we want to go from the ledge up into the top frame. So this will be the divider between to the two halves, but I'd also like to have one more on each side. So we'll have a total of three dividers. So I'm going to go Shift D, remember to duplicate and now I'll hit the X button and we'll move that along the X axis and we'll just eyeball it this time. We'll just move it to about the middle and I'm going to go ahead and shift D this one as well, shift D and again on the X axis so you just hit the X after you hit shift D and you can move it along the X axis so there we go just eyeball it to about the middle there we go and one more time shift D to duplicate and this time we'll just go ahead and click to say yes we duplicated it, we don't want to move it though I just want to rotate it now R90 and it's going to rotate at 90 degrees on the Y axis, the visible, the the window, the view axis. So we'll go ahead and click to lock that in there and let's just move it over to the side a little bit. So it's still inside the window frame but we're not coming outside the edge of it. So now we could either do, we could do one of two things. We could go ahead and scale it on the X axis hitting S and then X or we can just go ahead and grab these vertices right here. So just hit the B button to bring up your marquee select, click and drag, and then you can just drag that over all the way to there. So now if we tab out and we hit the Z button to go back to solid view, we rotate around our scene, you can now see that we have our window glass right there. You can't see it because it's behind everything. Uh, but we have our glass and then our, our pane separators right there along with the frames. So nice. So we got a nice bay window there, a nice full living room mirror. Okay, not mirror, but you know, window. Um, okay, so now let's add a door in here. Let's add a door right over here in the middle of this wall right here. So I'm gonna go to uh, the side view, just hit the three button. And we have our, our floor ceilings and wall object selected already. So we'll go back to three and go ahead and tab into edit mode. And we have the loops added on there from where we added the window. But I would like to, uh, add, well, 
I was going to add another one closer to the bottom, but that's we don't need to do that because the door will go all the way to the floor, so we don't need to add um, another loop around there. But we will need to add the vertical loops. So let's go ahead and hit the R button. And let's just go ahead and scroll our mouse wheel up once, or you can use page up, page down on your keyboard. We just want two lines there. So we're going to click that into place and then drag it a little closer to the back wall just so we can see it a little better when we're looking through the front of our screen. So if we actually looking through the camera view right now, and we'll rearrange the camera later on, but for right now we just want to look through the front view by hitting one on the key on the numpad, get that into uh, to the right place, then we'll hit five so we can see the perspective view. So now we'll be able to see that door, but you know we can probably see it, you know, a little bit better. I mean, not better, but still, yeah. If we move it closer to the front, so let's do that. Let's just grab that green arrow there and just move that to about right there. So if we go to our front view, yeah, we can see just the edge of it. And that's all we want. That's all we need. So we're gonna do the same thing like we did on the window. Just grab these two faces here, and you know what? That's kind of a wide door. So tell you what, let's do. Let's make it a little more narrow. Let's grab the vertex select group or uh, tool right there, and we're gonna hold down alt and right click on that edge loop right there and it'll select that that whole loop there we'll just drag that back a little bit to make that doorway a little more narrow so now we get the face select now we'll select those two faces and go ahead and delete those faces there we go so now we have an, a doorway so we're gonna do the same thing we did with the window as far as the frame goes let's go ahead and tab out of edit mode there and let's grab that frame we're gonna recycle it so let's go to our top view and we'll go to wireframe view so we can see things a little better. And we're going to shift D, duplicate that, drag it down just to, out of the way there, and we're going to rotate that 90 degrees. Okay? And then we'll drag it until it's kind of centered up there on that wall, that line, that black line there represents the wall. So we'll get that centered up there. And now we'll tab into edit mode. We don't need the the uh, ledge on it this time. So we'll just go ahead and delete those vertices out. And then go back to our vertex select tool and we'll grab these sides here the bottoms of those two sides and we'll go to our side view and let's drag it all the way down till it meets the floor so there we go and now we can grab everything on this side and just click the green arrow drag that till it matches up around our door frame there and we'll do the same thing over here D a hit a to deselect everything and B to select the marquee select again drag that over and boom now we have a door frame so now if we look through the front view 5 to go perspective view Z to go back to solid view we can see we now have a nice little door frame there and now we need a door okay so this will be the fun part um, let's go back to our side view and you know, we can see through the door so that's kinda neat um, okay so side view back to orthographic now we're gonna put our 3d cursor around the door frame so let's grab our our, our our windows, or excuse me, our walls, floors, and ceiling object, tab into edit mode. We're going to select those individual vertices that make up the outline of the door. So all six of those guys. Now we're going to go Shift S and cursor to selected. It's going to put the cursor right there in the middle of the doorway. So we'll tab back out, go back to our side view, and we're going to Shift A, and we're going to add a plane again. So we'll tab into edit mode now that we have that plane in there, rotate, rotate that 90 degrees, on the x-axis just like we did on the window actually it's gonna need to be I guess on the y-axis this time so we'll rotate it there okay go ahead and hit enter, hit enter to lock that in we'll scale it on the it's kinda of, it's kinda of different when you're working in the side view I wanna keep pushing the same axes as when I'm working in the front view but you gotta remember that you're in the side not the front so we're in the side view so now we need to scale on the y-axis now instead of the x-axis so we'll scale that until it's right there in the middle of the door frame. So now we'll grab the top of it, just drag that up till it's just missing the top, and then drag that down to where it's just missing the bottom. So looks like our frame is a little off center, so we'll just fix that on the door here, just bring that in a little bit. Okay, so now we wanna make this a panel door, and a panel usually has two little squares at the top and then two vertical, uh, rectangular shapes here and then two at the bottom. So what we'll need to do is add some loops in here. So we tab back into edit mode, control R. So we're gonna need to add 
One, two, three, four. I'm looking at my door right now <laughs> to, to get an idea of how many we need. So we need four total cuts. So we'll put four cuts in there. Go ahead and click to lock them in. And then go ahead and click again to, to, to position them right where they're at. And then we'll scale those on the x-axis, excuse me, the y-axis, since we're working in the side view. And scale that up about like so. And then we're going to add one, two, three, four, five, six more subdivisions. Sorry, counting on my door again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll go ahead and click to lock those in. Click one more time. Now we're going to have to rearrange these a little bit differently than we did the sides because these will be a little, they won't be as evenly spaced as the top ones, or the, excuse me, as the vertical ones. So we select those top two and let's scale those on the Z axis a little bit till they're more of a square shape. And let's drag them up towards the top till we have a nice even frame around the edge there, like so. Then we'll grab these two, scale those way down. These will be, actually, we can leave that about like so. That'll be fine right there. Then we'll grab these two and do the same thing like we did on the top. Actually, I think we don't need one of these. Yeah, we can get rid of one of these lines. So let's select that loop and we can hit X and then delete the edge loop and it'll delete that whole guy there. So then we can select this bottom one here, move it down about like so. And then let's move this middle one down so these two sets of rectangles are more even. So about like so. Okay, so now we'll go to our face select mode and let's select all of these little panels that are gonna come out. So we'll select those. Oh, I see what I did. I needed an extra loop right there. So I shouldn't have deleted that one earlier. I needed an extra spacer in between those two. So go ahead and add that in. Then we'll drag this down a little bit further. Okay, now we'll go to the face select. Select all these guys. There we go. All right, so now we'll rotate into so where you can see the edges of it a little bit better. Actually, having trouble with the uh, <laughs> hot keys again. So we're gonna extrude those inwards so like so and then I'm gonna hit alt s and what that's gonna do is scale along the objects normals and what that means it's it's only gonna scale um, according to the direction the object is pointing if that makes sense it'll make it kinda skinnier so if I hit alt s you can see it kinda just makes it skinnier it doesn't it doesn't scale it um, vertically as a group, it scales each one individually. So we'll do that. So we'll scale that a little bit like so, and then we'll extrude it out again, like so, and then Alt S again, and scale that down a little bit like so again. Then we tab out, and you can see, looks like a nice paneled door. However, that looks good on the outside, but if we come to this side, it's the opposite, and we don't want that. So all we have to do is hit, hit the R button, and then the Z button, because we're rotating around the Z axis, and type in 180, and that'll rotate that door all the way around. So now it's facing the correct way. All right, so now we got the door set. Uh, all we need now is a little doorknob for it. Um, so let's go back to our side view again. And it's, we're gonna be working on the outside of the door, but we'll just do the same thing we did with this and uh, just rotate it back around once we get it set. So let's put our 3D cursor right there where the doorknob should be. And I'm going to shift A, and this time I'm going to add a UV sphere. Now, what, a, what why the reason it's called a UV sphere is because um, it's set up in a way that you can easily add a UV map to it. And what a UV map is, is a way to add a texture map to it, a texture, a, a, a picture, as it were, to, to the sphere. You can add, a, like, a, a globe picture to it, and it'll look like a earth so um, that's why it's called UV so it's so it's editable you can easily add a UV map to it and again I'll explain UVs later on once we get into the texturing section but for now we're just in the modeling okay so we've added the UV sphere and it has 32 segments that's way too many for our purposes here so I'm gonna bump that down to 12 lock that in and on the rings I'm gonna bump that down to 8 so you can see it makes it a lot more faceted but it'll be a lot easier to work with and the scale or the size is way too big right now so I'm gonna scale that way down to that's a little too small so let's go 0 0.05 yeah that should be about right okay we'll go ahead and hit enter to lock that in and create that sphere now I want to rotate it to where the latitude and longitude as it were till it's pointing 
horizontally rather than up and down. So I want to rotate it to where, say this was an eyeball, this would be where the eyeball was looking, be looking straight up, or it could be looking straight down. But according to the, according to the way it's laid out, it's basically pointing up and down right now. I want to point it sideways. So let's tab into edit mode. We're going to rotate that on the y-axis 90 degrees. So you can see it kind of looks like an eyeball now with the iris and everything. So now if I go to the front view, which kind of is a side view for our doorknob here since it's oriented to the side, the front then becomes the side as it were. If I hit the period button on the numpad, it'll zoom in to this whatever selected and in this case it's the the sphere that we created for the doorknob it's selected so it zoomed into that and that's really handy when you're working with a lot of stuff and you you want to zoom in on a certain part of a model you can just hit the period button and it'll zoom in on what's selected so right now we have that door knob and it's right in the middle of the door we don't want that so let's move it out here into the room and maybe scale it down just a little bit look like it might be a little too big but now we want to attach it to the door, so we need to add the um, the shaft of it, I guess, the neck of it. So we'll select these faces right there, and it's going to extrude those. And we'll just go ahead and extrude those all the way through the door, like so. But we kind of need a you know a collar around it. So I'll tell you what, let's bring that back in a little bit to about right there. Then we'll go ahead and extrude one more time and drag that forward just a little bit. Then we'll scale that way up, okay? And then extrude it one more time into the door. So now we have, if we tab out of edit mode, now we have a doorknob and the frame. It's not a functioning doorknob, of course, but it'll work. So let's go and turn the shading to smooth on that and go ahead and give it a subdivision surface modifier. Now I did not add a subdivision surface modifier to the door or to the frames or to the windows. And that's because they don't really need to be that smooth on the edges, they're gonna be you know they're going to be kind of background pieces they don't really need a nice smoothed edge like the the furniture and things would but uh, you could you could add a, a subdivision surface modifier to it if you wanted to but you can see it really affects the shape of it you'd have to go back into it and add a lot of extra loops around the corners and things like that if you really wanted that on there but like I said we don't really need that so I'm just gonna not put it on there so all right, so now we have a nice little living room set up. Let's go back to our perspective view, hitting five on the keypad. And uh, there we go, we have a nice couch, a couple of chairs, coffee table, a window, and a door, and a doorknob. So I think that's a pretty good exercise for some modeling. Let's tell you what, let's go to our top view. And if we look through wireframe and back to orthographic, you can see it's not really arranged the best way. Someone comes through that door, they're gonna bang that chair. So let's grab all of these models here. Now we can just rotate them a little bit just to get them out of the way. So maybe, and that's not really a feng shui way to, <laughs> to arrange furniture. So let's just back it up maybe so it's right against the window and then maybe make these chairs a little bit more towards the corners of the room, like so. Okay, so now, oops, I hit tab. Let's go back to our front view, actually the one button, perspective view, back to solid view, and there we go. Zoom out a little bit. You can see we have the door over here on the right and the window and the frame and everything else. So that's going to be it for the modeling portion of this. Um, next time in the second block of this uh, little set of, of intro tutorials, we're going to start uh, adding the texture map. So we'll add a carpet texture to the floor, maybe kind of a stucco texture to the walls. Um, and then maybe either stucco also on the ceiling or like the old popcorn type of effect. Uh, it will complete with bump maps and things like that so it actually looks realistic. And then we'll add a, a transparent material to the window, maybe add another flat planed image back there so it looks like, you know, an actual window scene behind the window. And then, you know, just different fabric textures for the couch and then uh, so on and so forth. So that's going to be it for this one, and I'll see you when we start texturing.